Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be talking about positioning in Framer. And for those who are already familiar with CSS positioning, this video is going to be, is not going to be anything new because it's CSS positioning basically is very similar to Framer positioning. But for those who aren't, let's just talk about them. So if you click on any, any element, you basically get the positioning like this on the right. Now, if I click on the top level frame, which is this responsive breakpoint frame, you wouldn't get that positioning. And that's because like, this is just a breakpoint, and this is your art board in a sense. This is your art board at the top level frame. Imagine this as a browser window or something. So you don't have to worry about that particularly here uh, about positioning on that particular frame because that's just like the browser window you can consider it. So anything that's inside of it, you can basically go ahead and modify the positioning. So by default, let's talk about positioning from the top. So if something is absolute, absolute basically means it's floating. So imagine it's not basically respecting your screen size. It's not respecting anything. It's just going to be floating around and we can define where exactly is it floating. So is it going to be floating 80 pixels from the left and maybe 80 pixels from the top? If we just do that and if we play it, it's going to be 80 pixels from the left and 80 pixels from the top. But if I scroll now, obviously it's going to remain in that particular position. It's just going to be floating in space. It's not going to respect anything that's happening around it. So that's really important. If we come to relative positioning, now relative respects uh, basically um, the whole structure of your site. So when we say relative, it's going to say, okay, if I'm relative, I'm just going to take uh, the space since now this tree on the left that you actually see your layers is actually a, a tree or a, a content on your website. So if, for example, this is relative and this is the first element that's the content on your site, then it's going to be the first one. It's going to stick at the top and it's not going to break any of the layout. Obviously, it's breaking the layout here, but it's not going to, let's say, float around. It's going to uh, maintain its position based on wherever it's located in the hierarchy. So if I basically move this below the works, now it's going to go below the works because it's going to say since on the layer panel, I'm below the works, I'm actually going to go below it. So that's how that particular thing works. If he comes to sticky or sorry, if we come to fixed, what fixed basically does is very similar to what absolute does. So absolute floats things around. It doesn't really care about anything else. This actually does very something very similar. It also starts floating things around. But what it does is it maintains its position on, on scroll as well. So even if you're going on different sections or whatever, this particular position is going to be maintained if it's fixed. So basically we say, hey, you can float anywhere you want, but you're gonna remain in that position when we actually give fix to you. So now since it's here, if I'm scrolling down or whatever, it's always going to be here. And we can then position it accordingly. We can say from the top, it's going to be zero. From the left, it's going to be zero. The width, we can decide what it's going to be. I'm going to say it's going to be 50% or something along those lines, or maybe 55. I think 55 was the one that was in this particular thing. And the height, I'm going to say, is going to be 100 VH. So we're going to talk about the heights and the widths specifically in a separate video. But now if I'm scrolling down, as you can see, this is scrolling with me. So basically, it's going to maintain its position and it's going to remain fixed there. If we talk about sticky, now what does sticky does? So sticky obviously works very similarly in terms of relative, but what it does is if basically I'm scrolling down now, as you can see, it's gonna stick to the container that's that it's in. So if I was to show you just something, for example, um, I'm gonna create a container on top of it. Now, when it comes to sticky, people make two mistakes generally. The first thing is they forget that sticky only works within a stack. So if I try to create a frame around this, which I can do by just pressing command enter, this is a frame, I can name it hero container. Now, as you can see, this hero container itself became sticky, but that's not something that I want. I want this hero to be sticky, but I do, I cannot change that because now this hero container is basically a frame. A frame basically allows you to have Content inside of it basically just floating around. It basically has no order, it has no hierarchy. Content can just float anywhere it wants. So a stack is more close to an auto layout in Figma. And I'm gonna go to, into a separate video about stacks and grids, so don't worry about it. But basically in order to make something sticky, you need a stack. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna convert this frame into a stack, which we can just do by clicking the layout thing. So once we've done that, we can just give this a height. So I'm going to say 100 VH and I'm going to talk about the heights and the widths and everything as well. So don't worry about it. And I'm going to give this a hundred percent in width and this hero section. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to manually give this a 500 pixels height so we can see what's going on, right? 
And now what we can do is we can give this hero container a color as well so we can see what's happening. There you go. And now if we, let's say, play it, something like this happens. Now what I want to happen is I want this particular section. Actually, let me just even decrease the width as well of this hero. So what I want is I want this to be sticking. So we're going to make this sticky. And I'm going to say it's going to be sticking to the top to to the top to something like zero. And let me just increase the width even more. And I'm going to say the stack is also going to position this at the top. So now if we play this now, as you can see, if I'm scrolling down, ideally, I want this particular thing to scroll down with me, but not in a fixed manner. I want this to scroll down with me, but I want it to remain in this container. And when I'm scrolling way down, it should obviously just remain in its own container. So the first problem is people forget when using sticky is it only works in a stack. The second problem is they don't understand that in order to work with sticky, you need to make the containing the container of this particular element overflow visible. So now if we do that, it should be working. So we're going to scroll down. Now, as you can see, when we're scrolling down, it's working. It's scrolling with me. And now when I actually go to this section, it's going to maintain its position. When I go up, it's going to maintain, it's going to start scrolling within that section. We can also go ahead and define uh, what particular spacing it's going to take from the top. So if I say 40, it's always going to be 40 pixels from the top and I can keep on scrolling and it's going to maintain its position. So just something like that. And in order to demonstrate that even more that it's moving, I can just go ahead and create a frame. So I'm going to create a frame here, something like this. I'm going to give it a height of like, let's say 500 pixels. I'm going to make this absolute. So it's like floating around here. And now if we play this now, as you can see, we have something like this here. So that's remaining, maintaining its absolute positioning, but this is scrolling as we're basically scrolling it. So yeah, those are just some of the things that I wanted to talk about. And you can actually achieve really awesome layouts with something like this. I've, I think I've talked about most of the things. Maybe I haven't talked about, well, yeah, I've talked about everything. One thing that I actually want to show you now is if I basically move this hero section at the top, I can make this fixed while viewing all of these images. So I can say that this should be fixed. It should be on the left. Now, as you can see, it's on the left. The width I can define should be something like 55% and the height can obviously be 100VH because 100VH basically means the 100% of the viewport, which is your screen size, not screen size of the device, screen size of the browser that you're viewing it in. So now if you're scrolling down, as you can see, this remains fixed and we can see all of these things, which looks really cool, right? One other thing which the original template creator did was it also made this particular thing sticky as well. So if we make this sticky, it's going to work in a really awesome manner. And I just want to I want you to check this layout. So I'm going to say this particular thing is going to be 100 VH. So each particular card in this section is going to be 100 VH. And let's see how this looks. So if we're scrolling down, as you can see, this maintain its positioning. So this is sticked. This is sticky. And now this comes in. This is also sticky. And this comes in. This is also sticky. Now this we get this really awesome overlapping um, effect in this particular thing just by using sticky. So I hope that actually clears most of the positioning stuff that we have in Framer. In the next video, we're going to be probably be talking about widths and heights, and we're going to be talking about stacks and grids probably. So let me know if you're interested about that or if there's anything you need clarity on in this particular video. So that's pretty much it. Take care and actually do get in touch with me on Twitter as well. If you have any questions, you can directly DM me on Twitter and I would be happy to answer there as well.